It's November the 6th, 2021, and you are listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And we're back with another episode. Um, missing Adrian today. He's got family stuff going on. But Imar is here and Jeremiah. Hello. Hello. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Considering. Okay. Wait, waiting for the clocks to roll back. You're ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, this is okay. This is this is one of my pet peeves. The the US, Canada and and but I think mostly that part of the world just doesn't adhere to the to the protocol. We've been switched for we don't like it. over a week. We don't like it. Well, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I'm not a I'm not a fan of daylight. Not City. a big fan of me neither. Yeah. How about uh, Imar? We have switched. Uh, Ireland and Germany has switched at the same time. Yes, I we're think. we're back in we're back in um, daylight saving again. So it's it's now dark. My lights are still playing tricks with me though. Yeah, I can't yeah. get it right I switched, again. <laughs> I think we switch tomorrow. <laughs> yes, you do, and then okay. and then everything will the scheduling will be simple. Adrian not Easy. being here has nothing to do with that though. So, uh -huh. um, okay, we have a topic for today that we want to talk about: the importance of failure in photography. Do we? Hmm, how do we kick this off? Do we need to define what uh, failure in photography yeah. is? What is failure in I, photography? I, yeah. I actually wrote something down. Oh, good. Oh. Uh, because I thought I'd forget it, being exhausted <laughs> anyway. I, I, I thought that when results do not meet expectations or intentions, we tend to define that as failure. Uh, but if but, you approach yeah. it from a scientific approach, in other words, every scientific breakthrough every exploration of technological, biological um, breakthroughs in science are the results of multiple failures, each one contributing to a new level up of information and education. And so if one's intention is to continually level up and become more adept, then without failure, you'll never achieve anything. <laughs> so, so, so this that's is so true. this is pretty much the end of the episode because that's <laughs> the conclusion. <laughs> we need failure to become better, right? We do, yeah. we do, and also, you know, defining failure. It, there's commercial failure. There's artistic failure. In other words, one could assume that because people. Uh, aren't applauding, then you have no value. And that we know is not true. Um, it really is like you could have something that you've worked on that you love, but doesn't get any, any kind of uh, global love or audience mm -hmm. love. Conversely, you can make something you feel is quite mediocre that people really love. Um, you know, how you apply that to your own self-worth or your work's evolution is something that I think we need to discuss. Let's let let, let me let me do a quick uh, a quick um, call here for each of you. What's Imar, what is your biggest failure in photography? Do you have one? Do you what have one that sticks out? What is my biggest fail? Mm -mm. I I kind of do in a way, but it's not not in the way that maybe you think. I think that um um, I was thinking a bit about, you know, I'm always kind of harping back to wanting to do film photography again all the time. But I, when I think about it, what holds me back is this kind of preciousness that I think because um, all the supplies that go along with it are quite costly. And in that sense, I feel prohibited so that like to buy a whole load of film and just waste it in inverted commas is is that's the wrong way to look at it and then that in turn makes you kind of precious about oh no i can't just take any shot or i can't try something risky or i can't you know i need to do what i know is going to work but then that makes you boring and um that that's been my biggest thing because it, it's what stops me to go back to it mm -hmm. um that kind of preciousness about the 
A, the camera, B, the film and the, the, the development, all the different costs that go along with it. You're like, oh, I don't know how to kind of to weigh it up. I think it's become easier to fail, um, much easier to fail since I started down my little iPhone road of the digital photography road because uh-huh. everything feels so sort of instant and throwaway that you don't have to be precious in <laughs> any way, shape or form. Like you can like take a hundred photos and it costs you nothing to, you know, spend some time just kind of exploring what the potential in each one or in some or none or all of them. Yeah. You know, so that's that's been my um, my observation as well. When when digital, digital came along, right, mm. you, you, you it's easier to just try something out without the fear of failure creating cost or other pain of any sort. Um, but in another way, then the the actual the experimentation or the trying something different with um, a film camera and, you know, the physical products of a dark room or, you know, putting your hands in things that you, you're losing that on the other hand. So the, you have to kind of trade it off, don't you? Mm-hmm. It's a different thing entirely. You know, that that failure is there's more learning maybe in that kind of failure, the physical hands on um, failure in the dark room than there is just trying to uh, yeah. you know reproduce the same thing in digital i've uh, you just you just uh, said the word learning and that's the context in which i think failure is 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 crucial because um i've been teaching photography for i don't know 15 years now and uh mm-hmm. and as much as i want people to learn about photography i have been learning a lot about teaching in that time frame and one essential tool in teaching is letting letting failure happen to those or letting mm. people that you try to teach make mistakes and fail in certain ways because that is the best teacher mm. you know there's a there's a terrific analogy in american baseball the the highest paid batters you know the ones who are the superstars who are considered the greatest hitters in the game at any one time, they fail 70% of the time. In other words, they take big swings (laughs) and -hmm. we can use that metaphorically or in baseball for real, but it's only by taking those big swings that they're able to be big hitters. Um, So, uh, you can apply that in in your own work, uh, whether it's uh, creating an aesthetic um, impression. You can apply that in your, certainly in your emotional life. Uh, you know what I mean? There are people, oh, I, I broke up with someone. I'm never going to trust another human again. So there's that. There's the, you know, the, the j- self-judging which is, I think, based on social media, we, we've, you know, uh, we've come to realize that that is a very hurtful, harmful um, cultural, um, I guess, environment uh, in which to grow up. So you're judging yourself based on how many likes you have and failing to get those likes on whatever it is, whether your holiday, your dinner, your food, your art, your, you know, uh, process. Uh, And that's dangerous. Um, So I always say that leaning into failure, as you mentioned, Chris, is one of, I think, the most important things that you need to understand as you move through life. If you're an actor, than failing to get a part, a failure of an audition, um, is something you go through every single day. Uh, right. You know, and, 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 mm. and you learn how to cope with that. For some, it's difficult. For some, it's not. Um, you know, I, I would say my biggest personal failure has been, and successes have been in film, where, where the public failure 
uh, has made me face uh, a lot of kind of personal issues that I had to work through. And in doing so, they became the fire that lit a fuse for me in the most positive ways. It changed my life in, in ways that were dramatically more self-assured. And after I had a very big failure, I felt the fear of failure dissipate. And so mm -hmm. once you let go of the fear of fail failure, like those hitters, they're not afraid to strike out. Mm -hmm. They will go for it if they if they feel that opportunity. When you lean into failure, there are things that happen mysteriously that you can apply to something else, whether you understand what that is at that moment or not. And that becomes a journey of one's life because if you set a plan for your life when you're five years old, <laughs> and everything goes according to plan. What kind of life is that except a false one? Uh, you know, nothing goes according to plan. Everything is shifting, mm -hmm. changing. I so, have a, a, I, I have a, a history um, or a past in music. I've been very active in music and bands on stage. I'm a bass player. And uh, a lot of that was in jazz. And jazz, as we know lives by improvisation and improvisation means risk risk it means risk it means oh. inevitable failure at one point and uh, and having had that as a training ground as a as a as a as a medium to test failure and to test out how failure feels and especially um as a as a vehicle to learn how to wiggle your way out of failing and turning failure into something else. Um, ha having had that sort of a training, that's invaluable in so many respects. Because it, it, mm -hmm. it, it, first of all, it gets you, it gets you to, or for me personally, it got me to, um, to understand that feeling and to understand that that failure isn't, isn't the, the end, end of, of the, the world, world, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, not only yeah, that, yeah. it's quite the opposite. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, one could approach, just, just look at an artist like Picasso, perfect example, someone who is and was trained, absolutely beautiful, can do the most exquisite classical renderings, drawings, paintings, <laughs> and then went completely in another direction and hit the initial reaction to his work was abject failure. As, this is like garbage. Yep. And we can name, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of artists who circle from that. And yet by pursuing that and refining what it is he found in the apparent misuse of materials and, and, and aesthetic, he found a new voice. Also interesting that that there are numerous artists in history who have been considered failures by the public in their lifetime and only Time, man, yeah. only long after they yeah. died they were sort of discovered and isn't uh, it just the sign of an artist that they're just never happy with anything it is that they do is that so i always kind of think <laughs> no, i, don't think, I so. think so yeah i'm pretty happy with there's always <laughs> really there's always i want to do more of that. i mean there's I, I, I think there's i think there's a distinction been, between the successful I artists find myself a little disappointed <laughs> yeah I, I think there's a distinction between the successful <laughs> artist and the than the super genius uh, in some cases that might need some some of that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 definitely. But but, but in, in, <laughs> in general, fa failure, um, the, the word serendipity comes to mind, you know? Failure often leads to things, at least for me, it has often led to things. And could that, there could be a technical failure, that could be a failure uh, in timing, in mm. uh, whatever, in, in photography mm -mm. that, has led to a result that sure. I that I initially thought was garbage, and then a month later, I I luckily had thrown it away. Looked back at it and went, "Oh, wait a minute, that feels right, but mm. why?" 
Yeah, I mean, technical failure in photography is always something interesting to explore. I mean, uh, I, you know, those of us who have gotten up at the crack of dawn and hauled a large format camera to mm -hmm. a perfect kind of environment and like sleepily set it up and <laughs> matched it and loaded the thing, and, you know, and, and, and just at one point maybe grabbed the wrong film holder, you know, which was unloaded or, or loaded, you know, or already used where the, you didn't label it correctly because of fatigue or whatever, uh, or you, you didn't go through the step, you missed one step and didn't open the lens right. Or, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it, and, and you get back and you go to the dark room and there's a nice, either no film or a black sheet of film um my, go, oh. my 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 speciality with that is or used to be uh triple exposures because i <laughs> just didn't label the cassettes right and yeah. reuse the same mm. thing and it led to a couple of pictures that i'm yeah, you really very them. happy you with yeah. yes yeah uh -huh. so i remember um so that's kind of the experimentation and leaning into it that like is very interesting uh, where where you are disappointed because the intention you had initially was not realized uh, yeah but then immediately or maybe weeks or months or even mm. years later you look at it and you go wow serendipity applied this process to it i think i'm going to lean into it go deeper in it and see if I can bring out the magic that I left inside that I didn't see there. And, and, and that's why embracing it and taking big swings and not being fearful uh, allows you to, uh, f to free yourself of your own um, psychological um, binding uh, that will imperil you leveling up on with, whether it's on a personal journey or a technical journey or an artistic journey and, and so I, I think learning that is one of the most critical and important lessons of any artist any craftsman throwing pots how many mm -hmm. times you know those of us who know potters you know spinning a wheel and <laughs> you know making making the edges thinner and like how thin <laughs> can I do it how thin how thin and then blop so you learn by failing and there's nothing more obvious than a ball of clay which was a beautiful pot that turns back into mud to teach you the edges of what's possible and then maybe to refine how to get thinner or how to get wiser about the craft if you never go there if you're always conservative about it you'll never be able to do those very refined things um, i think japanese potters who use all of these glazing and heating and reheating and um, mineral applications half of their work is very kind of ex experiential half of mm. it is very experimental mm -hmm. and and yeah or maybe a third, a third. And then there's the serendipity of just the fire, the flame, the temperature, mm. the minerals, the content, the time. And that creates some magic. And, so, and, so, and sometimes you need and this... Uh, originality. Yeah, sometimes you need the spray and pray approach. Um, just yeah. just take sure. a lot of shots, take a lot <laughs> of uh, tries and, and be prepared to throw away three quarters of them. That's yeah, or more, or just keep the very one that is magic. Wasn't it? And wasn't it uh, Ansel Adams who said that one good picture in a year makes him happy? Yeah, or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I, I, I certainly adhere to that because, um, you know, you know, film, television, th those are a little more monstrous in terms of the responsibility you have. Mm -hmm. There's many, many millions of dollars and hundreds of people. And yet, if you could please yourself in providing a, a group experience so that everyone's working to their kind of finest capacity, you may not make the exact thing that you intended, but you could make something beyond it. And conversely, something below it. Uh, a great cameraman, Alan Davio, uh, who's since passed away, um, he said to me um, when, when we were discussing dailies, which for those who don't know, those are the, the, 
the, the kind of raw footage unedited that we look at uh, every day on a film shoot um, just to see the day's work. And often, you know, the dailies look fantastic. You go, oh, great, I'm a genius. This is so good. Uh, but he always said, you know, good dailies are good dailies, but no film is as good as the dailies or as bad as the first cut. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I always took that to heart because the refinement of it, the, in the dailies, you see the potential. In the first assembly of it, you go like, oh, God, it's flat. And then you start to apply an aesthetic to it and sharpen it and sharpen it and bring the essence of what you initially yeah. saw to the whole. And it, even in a single image and editing a single image, uh, I feel I go through that very often. So I may take a picture at a moment like in, in the camera, I go, oh, this is going to be great. Then I'll lay it out and I'll start to edit it and I'll go, mm, I don't really know. And I'll just dig deeper and deeper and deeper I, until I pull out something maybe different than what I wanted. You know, but. for me, it's it's the just leaving it be for a while. You know, the mm. if, I, if I shoot yeah. something and then try to dig something out in the, in the edit immediately, it often doesn't work well. It works better if I... If I look at it with fresh eyes, maybe a week later or two, and, uh, and I, I, I tend to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Do you it, do you I do anything? The, Sorry, go ahead. I guess the moral here is that it's a marathon more than a sprint, and that like you can't expect to not make mistakes. Do you think people get hung up on, you know, the I don't want to offend anybody, but the kind of, you know, the people who are into all the gear and. Oh, I used to be one of those. Did. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you know, do, do people get hung up on on trying to do things perfectly with all this kit? That, that so much so that they forget about why they even started in the first place, and then when they don't get it perfect, they give up because they, you know, or they think, oh, I'll get I'll get a different camera. I'll, I'll you know, I'll get I'll get more pixels. I'll, you know, you can I'll get a better lens. I'll, you can you know, play that game just, only so often until you mm. realize that maybe the amount of pixels isn't the solution. Um, and I mm. and this, this is I, I often get the question, uh, what camera to buy, what lenses to buy, and I'm I'm hesitant giving people advice because I I also stopped telling people don't because it won't help you because everyone has to make that ex ex that has mm. to make that learning uh, experience that themselves yeah. by by going through that valley you know you have to go through that mm. desert to come out on the other side having mm. learned that and that's something and I spent I, an awful lot of money <laughs> I, I, yes very true but that's something I found yeah. out is something you have to learn yourself you cannot learn from someone else's experience yeah at least and most can't people really can really blame the tools either because you know you you, you, you have to use the tools that you have and, and understand their limitations and their mm. uh, advantages. Uh, their advantages may be that they fit in your pocket very light and they, you know, they have a single lens and can do one thing really well. When you find that one thing they can do well, you can really push <laughs> out. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't, same thing when people ask me about gear. I just say one camera, one lens, you know, yeah. and, and when you've exhausted it after a year, mm. You, and you just really desperately need to get wider or longer. Mm. Then buy one more lens and go through the same mm. process. But you can get so hung up on gear. And I, I also say you've got to buy the camera that feels good in your hands. I guess as well, though, the new stuff comes so fast that people just get kind of carried away with, <gasps> you know. Well, you know, there's, there's the, a whole the industry newest, out bigger, there. The better. There's, there's that whole industry out there that tries to sell you stuff and they are working really hard in making you believe that their new camera is the solution to your problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nuts, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Like cars. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so, like so back, back, to the, back to the big hitter, um, uh, Jeremiah, that you earlier alluded to. Um, there's this one saying, and I'm not sure who said it, but... Um, or that one quote by some famous photographer who said, you know, the difference between the amateur and the professional 
is the size of their garbage can. <laughs> and yeah, I really smart. I really found that to be true because if I look in if if I open my Lightroom and I look at the couple of hundred thousand photos in there, the majority of those will never see the light of day. That's sure. my that's mm. my uh cabinet full of little poisonous things that are just for me and a few of those are out there and make me look good. But um, what people don't realize is that a lot of these, uh, that, that, that maybe one of those pictures took 20 others or 30 others or 50 others. That's why we call it editing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, editing is, is the separation of uh, potential from the non-potential uh, in, in whatever kind of personal view we have. But I, I agree when I'm, doing a, a folio of prints, uh, you know, and, and you're talking about expensive inks and very expensive papers, mm -hmm. no hesitation, tearing them up, throwing them out, tearing them up, throwing them out. It's the only way to refine it and make sure that, you know, I'll, I'll lean into the blacks, lean into the grays. I'll, 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 I'll try and make it on purpose. I want it to fail because I want to feel what the edges are. When does it all fall apart? And if I'm afraid of that, if I'm afraid of that edge, I'll never really explore the explore the refinement of it. And I think that's probably true for athletes, certainly for musicians, and certainly for jazz musicians, where you go really out there to the edge. And we could name, you know, a hundred amazing jazz players who've really kind of taken it on the and taken it on the chin initially when they began kind of exploring miles of course being a great example but but exploring the kind of borderlines of kind of cacophony versus music and how that blends and how you can use the kind of discordant aspect to redefine the melodies and i think that plays beautifully uh into a visual iconography as well and maybe a subject for for another day is is music's influence on image making and image making influence <laughs> mm. on music would be something very interesting to explore. I think. Right. Absolutely. So <clears throat> to to uh, um, a, a sort of a, a therapy to get out of this, I'm afraid to make a mistake uh, kind of thing mm -hmm. is, of course, to lean into it, to get some training, to maybe remove a boundary of sorts. Um, so. Um, Try to make a mistake. Try to make a mistake. That, that's, <laughs> that's one of the exercises that I sometimes do um, in the workshops uh, is to, to ask people, what is, what is the one thing that you always try to be very perfect about? And then you get answers like, uh, I, the focus needs to be on the eye or mm. the exposure needs to be spot on. And then, um, and then I turn that on, on its head and say, okay, your job for the next hour is to only take pictures where a subject is out of focus. And your job is yeah. to, to, <laughs> to completely mess up the exposure, to overexpose everything you shoot, to underexpose everything. Yeah, and, uh, well, you'll like my pick of the yeah. week. It, it, yeah, and, it, and it turns into an interesting mm. learning exercise. Um, for you, Imar, I have uh, just uh, mm. maybe a couple of years ago, I've received... Uh, from someone who who emptied out a basement full of old photo gear, uh, I received three kilos of uh, color negative film, 35 millimeter. Wow. Like expired old <laughs> stuff that was sitting in a fridge somewhere. Um, if you want, I can send you a pound of film and then you have no excuse to not yeah. shoot it because it'll yeah, be yeah, free. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> Yeah, do that, do that. That would make me very experimental. I'll, I'll send you a pound of and, film. And maybe, very maybe. not precious. Yep, not precious at all. You can <laughs> just shoot good. as much as you like. And, and I promise to bring back some photos. There we go. That. There I've we committed go. myself now. I have to do it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> ah, all right. Mm. Are we ready to step into our picks of the week? Sure. Okay, mine is... Um, I'm, I'm leaning into this. Uh, mine is I don't have one. I failed to bring one. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> here, it's empty. Nothing here. Um, That's good. So, good. Jeremiah, what is your pick of the week? Speaking of, of uh, 
images that are out of focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I thought I love this work, and and I was wondering. Oh, look at that! Oh uh, wow! You know, I was wondering th this particular aesthetic, how they achieve this. Um, so it for those who are like just listening, we're looking at a very blurry portraits. Mm. Yeah, they look like they were shot behind True. glass. Yeah. And, Opaque and, glass. But yeah. you could feel that there was probably a lot of experimentation to get to a, a consistency of aesthetic here. Mm. Like what kind of glass, what's the experiment, where the focus or non-focus lies, the color... Mm. I think these are just beautiful, and uh, and they and they I emphasize encourage. they emphasize an aspect of photography because n normally you don't look at the general shapes and the distribution of space and the and the color palette, but you look at the details. Mm. If you look at portraits, and here it just turns into yeah, color palettes shapes. and and uh, mm. another yeah. a different kind of exploration. For those listening, I encourage uh, everyone to go see our through our notes and and look yes. at these because they mm. uh, they're uh, what I intuited. I don't know the journey that the photographer took, but my instinct is that there was a lot of failure before these uh, were achieved. And if you look at the smaller mm. thumbnails, they become more defined. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Oops. I'm yep. pressing the wrong button again. Mm -hmm. um, and last but not least, Imar. What did you bring us? Oh. Not, no commentary on failure whatsoever. <laughs> this is the, the exhibition that we have on display where I work at the moment. And it's photography, film and video. Um, that's a light box. Um, lovely uh, water witching. It just kind of scrying comes into my head and she, this exhibition kind of pulls you into several different ways of looking at things um, some probably more successful than others but it's really nice thing to be living with at the moment um, there's a lovely Victorian stereoscopic viewer on a plinth there that's got a lovely image in it um, it's, it's just a gorgeous object but um, the fact that she pulls you in close to look at some of the work and then you're kind of much further back for other things. And there's a beautiful film um, as okay. part of it as well. Great. Yeah. So lovely, uh, lovely show. Did you take the photos of the art space? No, no. We actually hire a professional to do that job. All He's right. very good. His name's Dara McGrath. Because so I'm because I'm looking at both. I'm looking brilliant. at the ex exhibited art and I'm looking at the photos of the space itself because yeah. I like the space. Yeah, it's a nice space and that's himself there. But he actually kind of I think I used uh, his own show in our space as a highlight um, a few months ago. And when we saw the shots that he took of his own show, we we invited him to. Uh, photograph all the shows so he's kind of our official photographer now but yeah wonderful so if you are anywhere near South Tipperary make, yeah. make sure to also pay the have Art Centre a, a visit. virtual tour on oh, our website so you can go and virtually visit through the yeah if you scroll down you'll find that oh, and a podcast that I made with Sheila so yeah there we go yeah Oh, this is beautiful. So you can kind of look at things in closer detail and stuff. Actually, I have um, I think I may be able to get a loan of an Insta 361 camera soon to, uh, like, upgrade my, my panoramic shots, which are only 720. The gadget that we have <laughs> only does 720. So <laughs> watch that space. They could get really good soon. Will do, will do. And, um, mm. and there is about a pound of film on the way to you oh sure. yay yeah yeah so challenge accepted anyway that's um yeah that's failure in photography what does it mean for mm -hmm. the future of photography well for everyone's personal photography i'd say keep don't failing. be afraid fail keep failing yeah keep failing <laughs> keep failing sometimes force yourself to mm -hmm. fail 
it's gonna fail be, upwards uh, as we fa say fail, fail forward upwards. Fail, fail upwards fail often and uh, fail better <laughs> yeah that's i think that's that's really the the essence don't be afraid and especially in photography failure doesn't really hurt does it no, not at all not, not really it's not as dangerous as fading juggling knives right so anyway <laughs> this is it for this week we'll be back soon until then everyone take care bye 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 You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. <laughs>